I sure love it here. <laughs> oh, you caught me humming the tune I wrote. The frenetic dance of the firefly. Frenetic is a word I need to add to my lexicon. I actually don't know what it means off the top of my head. We're going to find out. Or I would if I could find my phone. Uh, unfortunately. Okay, well. Future pal. You know what? You're not doing anything right now. Put it on screen. What does frenetic mean? Because it's going into my lexicon as of today. The names... I'm going to word it. I... I... I don't like it. I hate it. I hate it. This is one of my pet peeves. When people try to make a unique name, and so all they do is make a unique spelling of a common name. This is clearly supposed to be Eric. It's obvious. But you're adding an arbitrarily complicated spelling, and if you ever name your child the wacky version of a real name, you are... That is a mistake in parenting. And instead, you should just name your child a unique name that other people won't hear. Because no one wants... No one wants to be named Eric with a Y. Because they're going to have to specify that with a Y for the rest of their days. You are cursing your child to have to explain their name every single time. Name your kid... Reichart. Because they will never ever meet another Reichart. Don't name your kid Eric. So this guy's name is Eric, as of right now. The name's Eric. I'm a free spirit who travels where the wind blows me. Once upon a time, anyway. A while back, during one of my windswept days, I got lost in a sea of trees. Starving, I fell to the ground. And when I regained consciousness, I was in an otherworldly place. Um... This is where you're supposed, supposed to gasp. <gasps> but anyway, the sight of the sunset firefly dancing in the moonlight was so beautiful, I thought I had landed in another world. Before that night, I was a free spirit. After, enthralled by the firefly. I'm setting up shop in this beautiful place where I met the fireflies. How about it? Do you want to see them? Of course. Show me the fireflies. I will fuse them to my arrows, which is not something I can do. Energetic Rhino Beetle, very rare, uh, rare insect. Uh, he's selling a bunch of random garbage, including bananas. Be careful. You're either going to get a lot of business or people are going to kill you because bananas are the mark of the Yiga. It's going to be one of the two. That's a cool, unique little shop with a story behind it, no less. Again, this game feels... Look at that. Look at that. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You cannot tell me. You cannot tell me that this game is worse than Breath of the Wild. They have an axe embedded into a tree, which tells the storyline of how this lumber came to be. They have an enemy over there eating meat, which is kind of cool. Not gonna lie. I don't, I, that's not incredibly common. And we have an NPC with a random little store that has his own little backstory. You cannot tell me. I will not be convinced that this game is worse than Breath of, the Breath of the Wild. Unless there is something absolutely horrendous later in the game, in which case I think it could probably be compartmentalized into that section of the game. Um, just like... What am I... Oh, it's just a rock. You know what? We don't use Riju enough. Die. Die. Uh, unless it can be, it, it, there's a really part of, bad part of the game, in which case it can be compartmentalized into that section of the game, much like uh, Wind Waker's awful part of the game can be easily, easily logged under. Yeah, they probably should have shouldn't have done that, and it was just filler for you know the rest of the game, which I think teaches us a lot about. I think the bad parts of of games, of movies, of uh, of anything shows teach us a lot and are important lessons if we have any oh i really want to go see colton if we have any outlet with which we can channel our creativity i mean dragon ball super ooh, dragon ball super is one of my favorite anime or shows of all time and the reason isn't because it's good. While it is really cool, 
and it has some fantastic moments way and some of the absolute peaks of the franchise. I'll leave that. I'll leave that red. It also has an incredible, uh, an incredible amount of flaws, but it's in those flaws that we learn about game design. We understand, oh, this bad animation is because a an anime schedule matters just as much as its staffing list. One of the reasons why I'm excited for the new Dragon Ball series that's coming out, because it has like a two-year animation schedule as opposed to the standard six months to one year. And it's in the flaws of Wind Waker did we learn that, oh, they had to cut content, and so they had to fill... I should probably go in this shrine. They had to fill the gap with some sort of content, which is why we got the Tingle Quest, which everyone hates, but understanding it makes it better. Understanding anything makes it better. And we then we ask, okay, but why didn't they add that in the HD version of Wind Waker? Well, it's because they actually already used the shrine or the, the, the dungeon. They used it. And, uh, yeah. And then you wonder, okay, okay, they used it. That Okay, where did they use it? And then you th start theorizing, and that makes gets you thinking. And it gets you wondering. Okay, we're good. What, po what possible places could it have been used? And then, in my opinion, it's Skyward Sword, where you have a dungeon based around the whip. And I think that the, uh, the Dragoner's Cavern was originally just going to be based around the Wind Waker. And possibly you're supposed to use the wind to guide, um, like, the floating platforms around, and that was the entire mechanic. And I think I, I, it, it, it teaches you so much, and then it makes you appreciate the things you like, you say you like, even more. If they're flawed, you understand them. I think that's I think that's neat. I think understanding the flaws of anything makes it better. And in a hobby where you are allowed to have creativity, uh, for example, my out, my creative outlet right now is Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it makes you much better at it because you know what to do with content that's cut. You know, oh, I can just reuse it. I can, I I just know what to do, and it makes you appreciate it more. I I also recommend that if you have any phobias. Uh, I, I mean, like many, have arachnophobia. I think it's a fairly natural thing for a human being to have. And, you know, it helps me, helps me with that arachnophobia a lot more. I think that's the chest. Is reading up on spiders and, like, understanding how they work. Why is it that they curl up when they die? Well, it's because they have... I apologize to my fellow arachnophobia uh, people out there, but... It kind of makes my point. That's really cool. Hold on. I have an idea. Is that the where the chest is? But if you read up that their legs curl up when they die because they... They <clears throat> are basically hydraulics... That's an interesting thing to learn about, and it makes you fear it less when it happens because this would have been the best place on the planet to put the chest, but I also get that if you if you did it wrong, you'd miss out, unless it's on top. You know what? I'm gonna go in a place where there probably isn't anything, but... Okay, okay, we're banned from going there. That's That's fair, that's fair. Okay, where did I miss the chest? Did I get the chest? And it contains... A sneaky elixir, sure. That might be useful, maybe. Spanking paddle at the ready. Spank us across. Perfect. Honestly, pretty cool, well-designed shrine. Very clever. And we get our 22nd or 21st uh, Light of Blessing, which I still am not going to use. We exit in the early, early morning. With 
me having recorded for the second recording session in this batch uh, for an hour and a half, I'm starting to fear that my, my computer is just going to randomly reset again. I don't trust Windows anymore. Let's see what these people have to say. I hope they're all okay. Well, I hope that these fireflies will not be missed because I'm going to take them from you. Okay, so I- wait, wait, wait. That's not what I want. Please talk to me. I hope that Captain Flaxel and the squad are all right. Oh, hey, things are pretty dicey ahead. Captain, Captain Flaxel's monster control crew qu squad is executing an operation there. Oh, no. Uh-oh. There's a pirate ship moored on the shore of Menoet River to the west. But never fear, the monster control crew is on their way to take them out. <laughs> Why am I not out there with them? Because I'm here to keep them fed. I'm a cook. In fact, I threw together a new recipe while I was holding on down the fort. Here, give it a try. Oh, scratch that. You've already got so many dishes in your pouch, you can't even carry one more. Darn. If you're confident in your ability to go swing a sword, you, could sh you should go help Captain Flaxel and the others. It's kind of neat having uh, a full food stock because I get unique dialogue that way. Like, sure, she said a pretty basic line. Oh, you have full inventory. But she then followed up with darn, which is... It, it just kind of neat. Oh, it's you. Hi. Uh, I didn't know that you came here. Um, Arik. Arik is his name, not Eric. Shut up. So we have a pirate ship. Is that like a pirate ship pirate ship? Is that it? Because that's not like a ship moves on the, typically involving the water. And like, that's not... On the on the move, nor is it on the water. The Highland Stable? Question mark. Highland Stable. Are there any NPCs to see? Are there? Is there a beard for me to shoot? There's clearly a Korok, and of course, I totally forgot that this was a thing. Pen. Uh, let's talk to some of the villagers and then talk to Pen. Taking care of horses. Yes, need something, sir? I can tell you about the area if that's what you're after. We have lots of happy horses running free around Highland Stable. So if you need one, you're in the right place. Then you can take it north or south or wherever you feel like going. I can recommend some scenic spots to visit if you'd like. Great, let's get scenic. My first suggestion has to be the stable nearby. It's called the Lakeside Stable. You'll find it as you take the road towards the east at the edge of Lake Floria. From there, my next suggestion is nearby. Go further east than south of the ocean and you'll reach a resort town. Luralin Village, it's called. The perfect place for weary re travelers looking to relax. Wait, what am I thinking? We got word the other day that pirates attacked Luralin Village. What? Since then, I haven't heard a peep about the town's fate. So what I said about Luralin Village being a good place to relax? <laughs> yeah, scratch that. I've got plenty more seating spots to recommend. Just say the words. Lay them on me. All right, here's a location that's been a mystery as long as anyone can remember. A good spot for true adventure. To reach it, first ride north until you enter a thickly wooded forest. Then travel east until you cross the Flory River and then go in immediately north into a rainforest. Then you'll find yourself what folks have long called the Zonai Ruins. Very old ruins. Very old. I can't imagine a better place for steeping yourself in nature's beauty and ancient history at the same time. In the air above the Zonai Ruins is a jet-black thundercloud that's been there since the upheaval. You can see it from here, in fact. And... Am I just seeing things, or is there something inside the cloud? That's a, all, that's a great seating spot to visit as well. Or, it would be. But there's no horse that can get you up there. The best you can do is gaze at it from below. I've got plenty other... Sure. Uh, Lake Hylia, yes. Your horse shouldn't go in the lake, of course, but... You two could take a thrilling ride across the Bridge of Hylia. They say a monster was living on the bridge for a time. But some brave monster slayer sent the beast to an early grave. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha! That's me. Who that person is or where they're from, I don't know. But if I could, I'd give them a hearty thank you. Are you sure that's all? Okay. Does she just keep going? Oh, seeing spot for last. Okay, so this is not radiant or infinite. Though it's kind of a big to be called a spot. It's the southern coastline. Picture this. You and your horse riding from Martha's Landing to Como Shoreline, then Puffer Beach. You can hear the waves lapping against the beach. Feel the cool sea breeze cutting through your clothes. While your horse's hooves pound faster and faster against the ground. 
Ah, oh, there's nothing better. On a horse, you'll be able to outrun any monsters that spot you too. Except last time I rode to Puffer Beach, there was a swarm of flying monsters waiting for me. They came screeching out of a cave uh, in the ceiling of this rocket area. Really caught me by surprise. I'm not a flying thingologist, but I guess they were nesting there? Anyway, those things can move as fast as horses, so watch out for them. And that concludes my guide to all the scenic spots. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a couple customers recently who weren't interested in any of my recommendations. Can you believe that? They said they were headed south towards the Lake of the Horse God and didn't have time for detours. I believe they wanted to find the giant white stallion or the god of horses, one of the two. Anyway, I appreciate you taking the interest in my scenic spots. Come talk to me anytime. Thank you, Fauna. I feel that was a warm welcome. We have a lot of ideas now. 